Tucked away in Black Forest, among the tall trees, green grass, and wild wildlife, you'll find a tiny herd made up completely of broken or abandoned fawns. And they came from all different situations. The woman who cares for this tiny troop of wayward deer, along with a team, goes by the name of Linda Cope. I've been doing this for 22 years. That's 22 years of working around the clock to build a brighter future for fawns and really for everyone else too. Maybe the cutest little pen and residence I may have ever seen. I want to make sure that they're, they're still around that they're still around in 20, 50, 100 years from now, the way we had the chance to see them. The job, a completely volunteer gig, always starts with a call. My husband found him in the cul-de-sac. Or emergency. His head was just in the ground. It was so sad. Oh, did you talk about the drainage ditch? Oh yeah. my God, that was a yeah. nightmare. Then the rescue and rehab starts up. All of this work, multiple calls, feeding, and medical checks each day means fairly long hours. In the early part of the year, in June, I spend 10 hours. A day? Mm-hmm, a day. Always, I mean, I'm just out here. I, that's where I kind of live. Live and spend money, large amounts of it, which creates its own set of problems. It's not sustainable. It's not a permanent facility, single facility that can be available 24-7. Additionally, the rehab scene also means wading through some sad and some dark times. Each fawn, after all, comes in suffering from injuries, abandonment, or sometimes human error. And not all of them have the strength or fortitude to survive their trauma. But those that do survive. These are all good. Start growing up, becoming independent. They become their own herd. Yep, they have enjoyed uh, doing fawn parades. And upon a release, some come back to visit. This is what the GoPro is for. <laughs> it's for close interaction. They usually just seem to come and go and come and go and come and go and go. But most successfully revert to a completely wild state. That's what I want. I want them to be regular wildlife. Now moving away from all this mm -hmm. cuteness. What are you doing? It's safe to say that if we've learned one thing about Linda, it's that she cares about this work. But even so, she may only have one year left in the field. Well, to be quite honest, I have some life responsibilities right now. And so she's afraid that may be the end of the foundation. This place will have to close down um, because it's on personal property. And that's, that's the hazard, that's the unsustainable part when it comes to residents doing the work. Now, quick interlude, think back to a minute ago. I mentioned that Linda was a volunteer. She runs a nonprofit, takes her own time, spends her own money, and although she is state licensed, she receives no state funding. Well, that's also the case for every other wildlife rehabber in the state. So, you know, the, the agency doesn't fund wildlife rehabilitation because we have very limited funding and our focus is on maintaining species and populations of wildlife. Now, running a year-round rehab off of personal funds and some community support is a system that is unsustainable long-term, at least according to Terry Collins. Well, I am the director of the Catamount Wildlife Rehabilitation Center. A facility that happens to be Teller County's only rehab center. This is a very small facility, but it's a a very busy one. Busy in part because there's such a small number of rehabbers in the area. And it's dwindling. We've lost quite a few recently. And if it's not money and it's not time constraints that force places like the Ellicott Wildlife Center to close down, it often ends up being age. We have a lot of folks that are retired um, and uh, you know baby boomers who are doing this work and um, you know they're all getting to the point where they just can't do it anymore and we're not seeing um, a, a lot of newer, younger people that are interested in doing the same work. We're kind of in a desperate place right now, yeah. And as you can imagine, the more facilities that close, the harder it is for others to meet the needs of the surrounding communities. What happens is the wildlife are still um, injured, but there's only a few people that will really be able to handle it, and so the capacity is an issue. Now, according to Colorado Parks and Wildlife, only four licensed rehabilitators are left in El Paso County. The thing about it is we're able to help a few animals. That's including Linda, who, by the way, is one of only nine rehab centers in the entire state that is licensed to take in large mammals and is the only facility for miles and miles that takes care of fawns. So about the only place left that we'll have that will take deer fawns is the wet mountain 
Mountain Wildlife Rehab Center. And that's all the way down in Wetmore, a drive volunteers would have to make because there's no state or county resources available. There is going to be a limit to what people can do in other areas and they're going to say we are full and there's not going to be anybody here. And Linda, she's afraid this could end up having serious repercussions for fawns with nowhere to go. They will be euthanized and and that to me is a loss that's not acceptable, especially if that loss is due to a hazard that humans have created. So what's the fix? What's the answer to a lack of rehabilitation opportunities in our area? Well, <laughs> according to experts, the answer comes in the form of a nature center paired with a well-funded wildlife rehabilitation facility that offers education. Education is power. As well as aid. We need it desperately. Currently, Linda herself is working to raise interest in this type of facility. And as it turns out, El Paso County might also have something cooking. So we've got Bear Creek Nature Center, Fountain Creek Nature Center. We are missing something up north. And that something could very potentially be what Terry and Linda are both looking for. Northern Nature Center has been in the master plan and several plans throughout the last um, 10 or 15 years. So the county has started a feasibility study figuring out where they might place that new Northern Nature Center. Is it in Fox Run, Black Forest? the pineries. And whether or not that potential facility could accommodate a wildlife rehabilitator. Having a wildlife rehab facility as a partnership with the Nature Center is just a natural fit. You know, what we do at the Nature Centers is to educate the public on wildlife um, and the natural and cultural resources. And the wildlife rehab is a great tool for that. But as you may have guessed, finding money for the facility, which can't be generated by the county or CPW, we don't have it, will be the biggest issue. It'll be a critical part up front, but also continuing throughout the years. But roadblocks aside, it seems like there's quite a bit of support behind the idea. There's definitely a need in, in El Paso County for this. So many animals need help. And, um, you know, having a, a facility like that nearby would absolutely provide uh, an opportunity to help educate the public and do good work. If I had to pick a, a good partner, this would be one of them that would, would just be um, a natural fit. A fit that could potentially mean a more nature-savvy public and a larger safety net for injured animals, especially those El Paso County fawns that may soon have even fewer options. I think if we don't start monitoring what's going on, and mitigating some of the problems that we possibly can that are our fault that we've created, the hazards that humans have created. I think that um, we're going to be sad that even something that we consider very common today will not be common in the future. We will have disturbed it so much that we will um, destroy it.